Great, yeah. I mean, I think uh, some of the most uh, amazing and most profound experiences in virtual reality are in non-gaming, right? So in, in the different uh, enterprise sectors, whether it's architecture, construction, engineering, and education, you're seeing some of the um, most profound uh, experiences in, in those spaces, right? So because uh, immersive technology like virtual reality gives you access to uh, experiences and tools that previously didn't exist. So you're seeing those that do, are using education for virtual reality to not only um, learn deeper, but also learn longer, right? And also for training, there's certain scenarios where it may be unsafe for, um, for a participant to, to be able to train, or just those scenarios may be very difficult to recreate. In virtual reality, you can recreate those scenarios. You can also, on an education standpoint, minimize distractions and really create to that person, to that individual, an ideal environment for uh, the best learning experience. Sure, yeah, I think the Smart PhysX team is, is definitely pioneers and leaders in the space of, of non-gaming uh, content. And you see that both in terms of both the founders, both them and Tithi being architects. They realize that there's, a, there's an actually deep problem in architecture design in that it, it wasn't intuitive for non-architects. Collaboration was very difficult. And the time to prove concepts took some time. So before virtual reality was a consumer product, they kind of had this vision of it'd be great for us to in a virtual environment, be able to create buildings and, and actually show that to our stakeholders. So once virtual reality came about, um, then they went ahead and actually built a team and kind of created that vision to say, in architecture, construction, and engineering, what are some of the biggest challenges that we face? And that is the ability to design and collaborate. For example, if you say you want a big room, well, what does big mean to me? What does big mean to somebody else? But in virtual reality, big is the same thing. You can both look at the same thing, change the dimensions. Um, so, so that's a great design um, collaboration tool. But not only in architecture, you see them also design these different training scenarios um, in, in virtual reality as well. And, and not just in VR, but the teams that be able to deliver solutions, both everything from augmented reality and everything into virtual reality. And the proof point is, you, you know, you've seen this team uh, grow to over 20 clients and actually generating revenue in this space and, and, and therefore kind of being the leaders in, in non-gaming and enterprise content. Sure, I think it's, it's already continuing to do that. I think it's more just an awareness of all the different use cases that virtuality is doing here, uh, both locally in India as well as globally in the manufacturing sector. Uh, we talked about design earlier before design concepts took a long time and also were prone to error just in, in general. Once things were, once you build something to change the processes, the, the assembly line itself are very expensive. So now we can do that in a proof of concept mode um, and globally. So now if you have stakeholders across the world, they don't actually have to fly here to go look at a proof of concept and we can look at that in a virtual environment, but also make those changes real time in the virtual environment. And if you're introducing a new manufacturing line, new processes, training those employees to complete those job functions have now become a lot easier and a lot more um, accessible and immersive. Yeah, definitely here in the first half, you, you'll definitely see it.